Yu Yu Hakusho and Hunter x Hunter 2011 are two of the greatest Shonen Jump anime series of all time. They're both created by the same genius mangaka, Yoshihiro Togashi. It's no surprise that these two works share a lot of similarities on many fronts. I mean they're both Togashi's work, so obviously there can be things carried over from Yu Yu Hakusho to Hunter x Hunter. The guy should have every right to rip himself off, right? Considering how cool his ideas and designs are, why wouldn't he? So a lot of people probably saw Yu Yu Hakusho in the 90s or early 2000s first, and then saw either Hunter x Hunter adaptation after. I actually completed Hunter x Hunter 2011 before I even considered seeing Yu Yu Hakusho. I thought Hunter x Hunter was great, in fact it's one of my favorite shonen action series. So one of the coolest things about seeing Yu Yu Hakusho, aside from the story elements, the great fights, the good music, and the great for its time animation, was seeing a bunch of similar things to Hunter x Hunter and going, Oh, so that's where he got the idea for that character. Oh, so that's where he got the idea for that place, or that move. Regardless, whatever series you saw first, I have to say that one of the best things about being a fan of both series is connecting the dots between the two, at least in my own opinion. So I thought I would go through and discuss some of the many similarities between these series. I want it to be known first that I will likely leave a few out, either because I forgot about it, or somehow didn't notice while watching New York Show. If I left any good ones out, feel free to let me know in the comments. I would like to see your opinions on the two series either way, and some similarities that you found most interesting. Okay, so aside from the blatantly obvious green color palettes for our protagonists, Gon and Yusuke share quite a few similarities. Both were raised by a single woman and didn't have the presence of their father growing up. Although they grew up to be totally different people due to how differently they were raised, Yusuke's mother is seemingly indifferent towards Yusuke and doesn't really care what he does and herself isn't a really inspirational person. She's often seen being lazy or irresponsible. This turned Yusuke into a notorious punk who was actively involved in gang violence at a school and the surrounding area, although it did have the one benefit of allowing Yusuke to hone his combat skills, as well as form his rivalry with Kuwabara, which turned to a friendly one. Gon was raised by his aunt, Mito, on Whale Island, and Mito was a very caring and compassionate guardian for Gon, and it greatly influenced Gon's own friendly demeanor throughout most of the series, so Gon always managed to win over friends a lot more easily. However, it can be argued that this is a similarity in its own right since the upbringing of their respective guardians shaped them as people. You can also say that both protagonists are, well, numbskulls. Neither really has a knack for critical thinking or strategy, and in general, neither are very book smart, and they both follow the trend of the dumb protagonists in shonen action series. On their journeys, both Yusuke and Gon are mentored and greatly influenced by strong female instructors. Genkai trained Yusuke and made him much stronger, and Biscuit did the same thing for Gon. Both of these instructors have a pink and red color scheme to their design, and are fairly old. This is very obvious looking at Genkai since the majority of her appearances in Yu Yu Hakusho are in a regular old form, while Biscuit is in her late 50s, although both women have the ability to appear much younger. Genkai uses her spirit energy to transform into a much younger version of herself, doing so in the Dark Tournament in order to fight to the best of her abilities on Team Urameshi, while Biscuit actually spends more time in the form that makes her appear like a little girl because she wants enemies to underestimate her, while also going on record to say that she doesn't like her actual muscular appearance. Kurama from Yu Yu Hakusho and Kurapika from Hunter x Hunter also share a few things in common. Firstly, both are males, but have an androgynous appearance that makes them get mistaken for females by viewers and sometimes other characters in the show. They also share a calm and intelligent personality, which allows them to fight with strategy. The fighting strategies of both Kurama and Kurapika also overlap in certain ways. The majority of Kurama's fighting techniques involve the usage of plants and getting opponents trapped by wrapping them up and restricting their movement, while Kurapika's most notable attack involves using a Nen chain and wrapping up a person's heart. This also might be a stretch, but both characters leave behind the other three protagonists to join another faction and pursue a more personal goal. Kurama meets up and works with Yomi in the Three Kings arc in an attempt to try and protect his mother and family from harm by Yomi's forces. Kurapika ventures off on his own in York New City and joins a security detail in order to get closer to the Phantom Troop to get revenge for his clan, which the Phantom Troop slaughtered. And both characters are seen wearing Chinese-style clothing. Hiei from Yu Yu Hakusho and Killua from Hunter x Hunter share several similarities. Design similarities include both characters being short, while in terms of personality, they can both be quite abrasive and hostile at times. Hiei is a full-blooded demon who's usually quite careless about those around him. He's arrogant and not polite at all and believes himself to be superior. Hiei can easily be considered the cruelest of the bunch. He's the most brutal, he has a more evil background than the other three protagonists, and is quite mean to Yusuke and Kuwabara despite them being on the same side. Especially Kuwabara though. He's always making fun of their combat abilities, calling them fools, exclaiming how he doesn't care about them, and making fun of their human background. Well, one of them was actually human. Sorry Kuwabara. The only person he's even remotely cool with is Kurama, and that's because he's a fellow demon. And it's not like they're best friends either. It's more of a compared to these guys you're tolerable kind of thing. However, it's not like he completely hates them. Considering that he stuck around for the entire series, he obviously came to care for them. It's just he was less willing to show that he did. But in most cases, he fought alongside the others and wanted them to win and wanted to help them out. And it became clear as the series progressed that he came to respect all of them. Even Kuwabara. Congrats, Kuwabara. Killua is also pretty impulsive and doesn't shy away from brutality. I mean, he didn't hesitate to kill a bunch of guys who he bumped into. 
and he ripped the guy's heart out during the hunter examination. I mean, come on, Killua, you could have just beaten the guy and you would have got the W either way, right? However, one major thing that sets these guys apart is their interactions with the other members of the main cast. Killua instantly becomes friends with Gon, Leorio, and Karapika. He has his differences with them, and sometimes is frustrated with them, but he considers them good friends, and he legitimately cares for them. In fact, he makes it a mission or a goal of his to actually be a better friend to Gon and the others, since he lived such a sheltered life before. Killua is still a brutal, no-nonsense fighter and shows little regard for those outside of his group of friends. But Gon, Leorio, and Karapika are an exception. A group of people where he can relax his guard and not feel on edge around. And a group of people he can count on to have his back, while wanting to prove that he has theirs. Both Hiei and Killua also have a sister that plays into their story throughout each respective anime. Hiei has a sister named Yukina, which he was searching for and later found being held captive by Tarukine. He wants to protect her but can't bring himself to tell her that he's actually her brother, and keeps it hidden for the duration of the series. His sister is a huge motivating fact for Hiei throughout the series, and a source of development for his character, while also being an important part of his backstory. Kilua's sister, Aluka slash Nanika, has a dangerous split personality. Nanika is the personality that grants wishes once Aluka's three requests have been fulfilled, and one dies if they don't fulfill Aluka's request. Kilua needs Aluka's healing abilities as Nanika to save Gon from death. He goes back to the Zaldic estate in order to get Aluka's help, but is not allowed to take Aluka out of the estate by his family. After a few smart moves, he escapes the estate and gets Nanika to help heal Gon, while they would share an emotional scene shortly afterwards in which Kilua consoles Aluka and promises to treat both of her personalities with equal love. Unlike Hiei, Killua's relationship with Aluka doesn't play into the story at all until the end when it becomes necessary to go and ask for her assistance. While the short amount of screen time that Aluka had did serve a double purpose of being a plot device to save Gon, while also developing Killua, while Hiei's sister was a major part of Hiei's story arc throughout most of Yu Yu show. Lastly, both characters do share a tough life before meeting the other protagonists. Hiei grew up in an ice village that only consisted of women. When he was born and discovered to be a boy, his mother was forced to give him up and leave him to die in the demon world. Hiei then lived with a group of bandits for quite a while until they got too scared of him and left him alone, forcing him to fend for himself in the harsh demon world against many strong opponents before he finally met Shigure and got the Jigan Ai. Kilua did have his family around him, but since he was in a family of assassins, his life was sheltered and interactions with the outside world was limited. While his family's assassin occupation meant that he was meant to take up the family business, and he was trained as an assassin from a very young age, and endured a lot of harsh physical and psychological training. That probably isn't great for a kid, let alone anyone. No wonder he wanted to leave that estate so bad. Kawabara from Yu Yu Hakusho and Leorio from Hunter x Hunter are also quite similar in many ways. In appearance, both are the tallest among the four protagonists, and both have a huge comic relief element to their personalities. They can also be considered the weakest among the four protagonists, as their fighting abilities are no match for the other three. Although it should be said that Kuwabara has much greater fighting ability than what Leorio is displayed in the Hunter x Hunter anime, Kuwabara actually has the ability to use spirit energy, and actually has quite a few strong and unique techniques. He's not weak by any means. He had a lot of meaningful victories, including against Elder Toguro. It's just that Kuwabara's power is less than Yusuke Kurama and Hiei. While in Hunter x Hunter, Leorio suffers from the additional problem of having far less screen time than everyone else. He can fight though. He's not necessarily weak either, but for the majority of the series, he lacked any significant Nen abilities. And his brain always served him better than his fists. Leorio himself isn't too preoccupied with combat either. His ultimate goal is to become a doctor, so he put his intelligence into more intellectual pursuits, rather than learning to fight on par with the other hunters. Taking the hunter exam was more of just a means to an end, so he can get the hunter license and use the privileges that it gives him. During the York New arc, Melody even says that he's a very kind person, and is more suited to being a doctor than a hunter. So it can be said that a huge distinction between Leorio and Kuwabara is intelligence. Leorio is actually a smart guy, while Kuwabara is just an idiot. But they do have one more thing in common, and that's being more compassionate than they're letting on. Kuwabara is the leader of a middle school gang at the beginning of the story, and is himself quite a notorious figure in the gang scene. He was second only to Yusuke. He always puts on a tough guy persona, but throughout the series we learn that his actual personality is a lot different from what is initially introduced to us. As the show progresses, he's seen trying to save the life of a cat from another gang, expressing a strict code of honor, crying at Yusuke's funeral, falling in love with Yukina, helping Yusuke reach his potential. Kuwabara has a tough guy front, but is actually the nicest guy from among the four protagonists. Leorio decided to become a doctor after losing his friend to an illness. When we're first introduced to Leorio, he seems to only want to be a hunter for money, something which immediately comes off as shallow. We find out later about his motivations to become a doctor, believing that becoming a hunter will give him more funds to fulfill his medical dream and be able to help people who can't afford healthcare. While this last one is a bit of a stretch, just hear me out. Both Kuwabara and Leorio are left out of decisive final arcs. Kuwabara was obviously not chosen to be a demon king in the Three Kings arc, since he wasn't a demon. But he literally played no part in the entire arc, while Leorio was nowhere to be seen during the Chimera Ant arc. 
I know that the Chimera Ant arc isn't the last arc of Hunter x Hunter, but not only is it the most notable arc, but the most impactful. There was the 13th Chairman arc that took place after the Chimera Ants, but that arc mostly served as a setup for the arc to follow, which has only been covered in the manga. So the Chimera Ant arc is the last major story of the Hunter x Hunter 2011 anime. On the antagonist side of the coin, Hisoka borrows several elements from Suzuki of Yu Yu Hakusho and seems to be the precursor to that kind of character idea. Suzuki first appears disguised as an old man and leader of Team Yuria Togi in the Dark Tournament until his ruse is discovered and he decided to reveal his actual identity afterwards. As a clown, he also possessed the ability to kill people with playing cards. After he humiliatingly loses to Genkai in the Dark Tournament, he drops his clown getup and opts for a more normal look while abandoning most of his self-worshipping ideals. In Hunter x Hunter, this character type is notched up to 11, with Hisoka. He also has the clown aesthetic with the teardrop under his left eye and utilizes the ability to use playing cards as a weapon. He also has a very similar personality to Suzuki, although a lot more subdued and subtle. And Hisoka is much more important to the Hunter x Hunter story than Suzuki is to Yu Yu Hakusho. Suzuki first appears in the Dark Tournament and largely leaves the story after his defeat. Hisoka is introduced fairly early on in Hunter x Hunter and is a primary threat and an obstacle for Gon for most of the series, fighting Hisoka on two occasions and losing while also anticipating another fight at some point in the future when the stakes are even higher. Hisoka also plays a huge part in the York New Arc's narrative, as his betrayal of the Phantom Troop led to Corollo's capture, while also being the reason for Pakunoda's death. 